Right. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So what if we ran companies that way? Because companies aren't democracies. They're totalitarian. So how do you run a company? So first of all, usually how, com how are companies made usually? Mm -hmm. uh, I would never talk to Ethan about this like because this is the one aspect yeah, where it goes like directly against his best Apple interest. Google. Right. Made by a few entrepreneurs. Uh, like, know, I wouldn't debate Ethan on this front. I mean, obviously, it's different for Dan because, like, Dan is, uh, is you know, he, he works uh, with Ethan in a different way. But if I were to debate someone who is a business owner, uh, friend or not friend, like, that's not a talking point that I would use because that shuts you out of the combo aggressively. Mm, that See, that's, that's why I... Ladies and gentlemen of the Digital Colloquium, today, we find ourselves at the epicenter of a most intellectually stimulating confluence, where the titans of online discourse, Hasnabi and Ethan Klein, embarked on a voyage of dialectical exploration. This parley unfurled within the hallowed confines of the H3 podcast, where Ethan, the maestro of the moment, attempted to delve into the labyrinthine labyrinth of communism only to find himself met with Hasnabi's masterful rhetoric, akin to a tempestuous tempest on the sea of ideological debate. Ethan Klein, a man known for his penchant for critical inquiry, began by acknowledging the prevailing totalitarian nature of corporate governance. He astutely discerned that companies, in their essence, function as bastions of authoritarianism, rather than the beacons of democratic ideals that we might hope for. This profound observation birthed a curious question, can businesses be moulded into the mould of a communist utopia? In this moment of cogitation, Ethan illuminated the fact that many corporate entities are sired by the vision of a select cadre of entrepreneurial luminaries. However, Hasnabi, that sagacious oracle of political insight, offered a perspective that was nothing short of revelatory. He articulated, with finesse, the stark divergence between the realms of communism and capitalism. Hasnabi, in his wisdom, recognized the fundamental incongruence that rendered a debate on this matter an exercise in futility, and in a display of benevolence, declined to engage Ethan in a contest that could be akin to intellectual harakiri. Hasnabi recognized that a debate on communism within the context of business, when faced with an entrepreneur of Ethan's stature, would be akin to leading the lamb to the slaughter. It would not serve the best interests of the discourse, nor would it demonstrate Hasnabi's true prowess in the art of debate. However, the dynamics shifted when the spotlight turned to Dan, the silent yet influential collaborator working in Ethan's orbit. Hasnabi, in a display of intellectual chivalry, drew a line in the proverbial sand, distinguishing between his approach to debating business owners and those working within the inner sanctums of corporate empires. Hasnabi was unambiguous in his stance, when engaging in discourse with a business magnate, personal relationships notwithstanding, he would not wield this particular talking point as a weapon, for it had the potential to bridle the conversation to cast a pall of contention over the discourse, and ultimately, to sabotage the prospect of a fruitful exchange. Hasnabi, the maestro of strategic discourse, has adopted a cunning stratagem that involves sidestepping certain contentious talking points, such as the very architecture of business enterprises and the noble art of entrepreneurship. This stratagem, rather than being a mere happenstance, serves as a deliberate ploy to cultivate an atmosphere conducive to the blossoming of productive dialogue. In this intricate dance of ideas, Hasnabi demonstrates an acute awareness of the potential stumbling blocks that could ensnare business magnates like Ethan Klein. It is, as I submit, a masterstroke of comprehension, Recognizing that these particular topics are akin to intellectual landmines, poised to detonate any semblance of an open and constructive conversation. In the grand theater of debate, one must, without equivocation, erect a scaffold that cradles both disputants in the arms of intellectual comfort. Hasnabi, in his sagacious wisdom, 
deftly refrains from wielding arguments that could, with all the subtlety of a sledgehammer, slam the door of dialogue shut. His aim, of course, is to keep the channels of discourse open, flowing with the effervescent waters of ideas and insights, fostering a harmonious and productive exchange. But the brilliance of Hasnabi's approach goes beyond the mere avoidance of conversational tripwires. It is, in essence, a recognition of the paramount importance of tailoring one's arguments to the specific contours of the terrain and the inclinations of the interlocutors. In the case of Ethan and his producer Dan, Hasnabi astutely acknowledges the divergent roles they occupy within the H3 podcast ecosystem. It is a subtle nod to the notion that different strokes are required for different folks, that a customized approach may be the key to unlocking the doors of fruitful dialogue. Nevertheless, as we immerse ourselves in the profundity of Hasnabi's stratagem, it behoves us to acknowledge the potential chasms that yawn beneath its surface. For every coin bears to faces, and every strategy harbors its share of perils. One such pitfall lies in the risk of circumscribing the scope of the debate. By judiciously avoiding specific topics, Hasnabi's approach flirts with the notion of truncating the intellectual canvas, potentially omitting crucial facets of the discourse. It's akin to crafting a jigsaw puzzle with missing pieces, rendering the whole incomplete and unsatisfying. Another precipice that looms is the inadvertent exclusion of pertinent counterarguments. Hasnabi's deliberate evasion of certain talking points may inadvertently bar alternative viewpoints from the stage. This can distort the symmetry of the intellectual jost and prevent the unfettered exploration of diverse opinions, an essential ingredient for a robust and multifaceted debate. Furthermore, there exists the danger of misrepresentation when certain issues are relegated to the shadows. By sidestepping these critical junctures, Hasnabi risks unwittingly caricaturing the beliefs of business proprietors or, worse yet, failing to grasp the intricacies of their arguments. Such misrepresentations can taint the integrity of the discourse, casting shadows upon the veracity of the conversation. In certain scenarios, Hasnabi's strategy, though astute in many respects, may falter. Consider the circumstance where the very goal of the discussion is to dissect the inherent deficiencies or systemic flaws within the fabric of the business paradigm itself. For instance, when the debate revolves around themes like income inequality or labor exploitation within the capitalist framework, deliberately avoiding these issues might hamstring the discourse. It could hobble the ability to address the crux of the matter and suggest possible correctives. In such contexts, a more direct confrontation with these points becomes imperative for a thorough exploration of the topic. Moreover, Hasnabi's approach may flounder when the objective extends beyond the immediate interests of business owners to encompass a broader societal canvas. Themes like wealth distribution, social responsibility, and the ramifications of capitalism on marginalized communities demand an all-encompassing inquiry that embraces a multitude of perspectives, including those of business owners. By evading these pivotal themes, Hasnabi's strategy risks lopsiding the conversation, blinding it to the systemic repercussions of the topic at hand. In such instances, a more inclusive approach, one that invites all participants to grapple with the critiques and challenges of their respective positions, emerges as a salient path to a nuanced and fruitful discourse. In the grand tapestry of dialectics, Hasnabi's tactical finesse illuminates the path to productive dialogue, but it is not without its caveats. The strategic artistry is evident, but let us not forget the potential hazards that lurk beneath, for a well-rounded understanding of any discourse demands the full spectrum of perspectives and a willingness to confront the complexities of the subject matter. In conclusion, this exchange, fraught with intellectual complexity and nuance, serves as a testament to the dexterity of Hasnabi in the arena of online debate.
It highlights the inherent challenges that arise when broaching the topic of communism within the context of entrepreneurship, and it underscores the importance of strategic engagement in the realm of digital dialogue. As we navigate the labyrinthine pathways of contemporary discourse, let us take heed of the wisdom demonstrated by Hasnabi, for it is in this discerning approach that true progress and enlightenment may be found.